right, hello everybody, and welcome back to your favorite film podcast, The Average Film Enjoyer. We are your average film enjoyers, Trey and Evan, um, and we're excited to be here today. We got a little bit of a longer episode for you. We're going to be spending some more time on movie news and what we've been watching recently since we didn't do that in the previous episode. Yeah, me and Trey uh, haven't recorded in like a week, so... Yeah. We a lot to oh, talk yeah. About. Movie news wise, I, yeah. I I texted Trey on Friday and I was like, bro, because we're our next episode is Inception and Interstellar, and we're doing showings because I'm moving. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I don't know if I have time for the episode today. And he calls me and he's like, you know, we're not recording today, right? And I totally yeah. forgot that the Dark because Knight we episode recorded is coming it, like <laughs> early. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And thank so, you yeah, for all of while. you that listened to our Dark Knight episode. We had a blast recording it even though it yeah. went on for over three hours. I miss Cash. Uh, <laughs> dude, dude, I feel I so Cash, fucking dude. bad for him right now. Why? Because, so, I don't know if you know this, but, like, they announced Dune 2's release date March 14th, right? Yeah. That was set in stone. He books a cruise with his family and friends and shit. Okay, I'll get back right before Dune 2. And then they move the release date up two weeks which is yeah unheard oh of. yeah he's what just stuck in the middle of the ocean Sorry. right now while yeah, we're all so, putting up our dune 2 reviews so uh yeah so he was like i i actually feel so bad because dune is i think his like second favorite movie ever behind yeah the Batman, i think it's so that sucks yeah uh, yeah but it was a blast. At, least he, at least he's stuck that he can't like go look at reviews and stuff it's true uh but yeah we have a lot of movie news to cover a lot of yeah. stuff we've been watching to cover a lot of shit for me um <laughs> and i got peak little little announcement we are gonna start doing because today obviously imdb episode we're working our way through the imdb top 250 we are gonna start doing two at a time like we do with director deep dives uh because it's just faster um, yeah we want to cook through this list a bit quicker because after we finish exactly. the IMDb Top 250, it's time for the Letterbox Top 250. And that that's when we true. get into the real film, bro. Trey, you're going to have to watch Santa and Tango. You're going to hate it. Yeah, play vi- play Fortnite while you watch it. <laughs> that, nothing happens. Jagger is still... I, okay, I know Jagger listens to the episodes. I have two things to say to you, Jagger. Number one, Santa and Tango, you say it's amazing. You still haven't logged in a letterbox. What's going sure. on here? You're it's like, true. oh, I'm watching it over multiple days. I get you're busy. I watched it over two days. Where's the log? It's been a week yeah. since you said that. Where is it? Secondly, if you say that Dune 2 is bad, you are trying to be different. Yeah. I I will not stand for this. I understand some people don't like the first dude because it's whatever. Dune 2. I'll get into it later. I've yeah. seen it. Trey is not. I will keep it spoiler no, free. No yeah. spoilers. And but yes, Jagger. I saw Jagger. Jagger, we both love you. You're like a little I love brother you, to but... me. Uh, <laughs> but I saw him comment one of our buddies, Bryce, who's a movie talker. Shout out Pain Reviews. Go follow him on TikTok. Does great reviews. Uh, everything like that. Uh, he just recently watched um the original david lynch dune and he gave it four stars which is what fine you like heck? you like what you like you know evan we're out here giving the commuter and and non-stop and all this <laughs> stuff five stars so we can't really ju- we're not really in a place to judge uh, uh but then jagger commented uh maybe better than 2021 dune and i was like dude come on you're killing me my heart hurts I, yeah. <laughs> we I'm love you, though, Jagger. This, uh, <laughs> this um, slander. But first, before we get into anything, Evan, how you doing? How's your week I'm, been? I'm doing fantastic. Work, yeah. uh, it's currently minus 32 outside and, and snowing. It's not snowing now. It's actually pretty nice now. It's minus 21, but sunny and blue skies. Yeah. Love to see it. Um, So I left for work at like 4 this morning instead of like 4.30 because I started at 5. Yeah, the roads are fine. I started work half an hour early, so I finished everything like super fast, and I just got to chill, which was awesome. Uh, really, really good time. Uh, I have been playing Elden Ring like crazy in anticipation for the new DLC, which is super hype. Uh, 
And Hell yeah. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth comes out on Thursday, and I do not work Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, and my girlfriend is going to a concert on Friday and a party on Saturday, so you already know I'm going to be degening that game so hard. I just finished my replay of Final Fantasy VII from 1997. It's older than I am. Yeah, I cannot wait. I'm so excited for that yeah. game. I'm So I'm doing awesome. I've been watching lots of great movies. Me and my brother and my girlfriend went to go see Dune Part 2. It was my first uh, like early access screening. They mm-hmm. played one trailer, and it was for Furiosa, which is crazy. We we get in there. We got posters. I'll grab a poster later and show you. Hell but yeah, uh, dude. And you got your flashlight bucket, right? Dude, okay. So I was going to buy one, but they're not selling them till Friday, till the official release date. So they're oh, not that's fully so sold dumb. Out. I'm so sad. So now I have to go back to buy one because I want it. So yeah. they weren't selling them, which sucks. But it was a really cool experience. Like, uh, I'll talk about it more later. But like, yeah, we walk into the IMAX theater and there's a huge screen and it says Dune Part Two. Experience it first in IMAX. And like, we get in there, they play one trailer and it's for Furiosa, which is crazy because like it's such a good trailer in IMAX. And then. They cut to Timmy and Zendaya pop on screen. And like, you're the first to experience Dune Part 2 on IMAX. Enjoy. It's on the biggest screen you can find. Right into it. like, And yeah. then, it, I'll talk about the movie later, but the experience was just amazing. I had so much fun. So, yeah, I'm doing great. I'm really yeah. uh, having a good time. How about you? I, I'm doing good, yeah. I worked this weekend. Heck yeah. Uh, I had... A, See, you get up, I, I am not a morning person, so <laughs> yeah. even, I work at 8 o'clock in the morning, so even getting up at 6.45 to get ready for work is miserable for me, I fucking hate it. I get uh, that. I had to go into work at 7 the other day because I had to leave early. <laughs> yeah. Um, I woke up at 5.45, I thought I was gonna die. It was miserable. <laughs> I hate it. Yeah, it. it's, but, it's weird. I got used to it really quick, and like, one thing, I wanna take it serious really quick, you know what? Yeah. Shout out to everyone's mental health. Stay, yeah. stay. Uh, you know, I hope everyone's doing well. Yeah. Uh, I find that the later I stay up, the worse my mental health gets. Like when oh, it hits for, two for to sure, three a.m. I used sure. to when I didn't have a job, I would stay up till like two or three playing video games, and I would be just like, I feel like the world is crashing in on me, and I hate yeah. my life and all this shit. Um. So this job has been great because i go to bed early i you know i i come home from work and i have my my me time and then my girlfriend comes home from work and we hang out i go to bed i get up early and then i go to a job i'm sure like all the real talk people listening know that i love baking and cooking so i get to go to a job that makes me happy and just like yeah so do do what's great for yourself you know i yeah. i'm glad that you understand that nighttime thing bro it's hard for me to explain no, from, like my yeah, dad stuff for, I'm like for real dude and now that i'm like my sleep schedule is finally like correcting itself yeah i'm like naturally like i slept in this morning and usually sleeping in for me would be like 9 30 right i slept in this morning and it was 7 30 and i woke up <laughs> yeah. and i was like oh it's late uh yeah, it's yeah. weird. Yeah, I I can barely make it past like eleven o'clock now. Oh, I, dude, same. It hits eleven, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to sleep. Dude, I booked off uh, yesterday because my Dune showing was at mm-hmm. seven, and it's uh, like three hour movie almost. And I yeah. expected like fifteen twenty minutes of trailer, so I was like, there's no way I'm making it to work because I get up at like three thirty. Yeah. And uh, we get home at like ten forty five, and I I immediately went to sleep. <laughs> yeah, dude, for real. Um, also, really quick, I uh, shout out to Jager one more time. Uh, the other week, I was talking about how I commented on one of his two star reviews. It was the same score as Oppenheimer. I remember what movie it is. It's Trolls. Trolls. You're sick, bro. <laughs> can't. can't. Um, anyway, but yeah, uh, I, mean, I worked, uh, I left early for work to go. I got tickets as one of my Christmas presents to yeah. see Jurassic Park with a live orchestra, like doing the entire score. Oh my uh, God. That was pretty fucking sick. That's crazy. Uh, I went with my mom. Um, yeah, that was pretty sweet. Um, I mean that moment where, uh, David Attenborough 
Is it David Attenborough or is it Richard Attenborough that's in that movie? I'm not sure. One of them is a Planet Earth guy and the other is in Jurassic Park. Whichever one. But David the, is the Planet Earth guy. <clears throat> okay, so it's Richard. It's his brother, Richard Attenborough, in that movie. Yeah. The scene where he's like, welcome to Jurassic Park. <coughs> and then the score, like, just, like, tra- it's like... Oh, I, my God. I was, so like, good. I was, I Love had chills throughout my entire... It was unbelievable, dude. Yeah, oh, I've my been God. dying to experience a movie like that. They did uh, Prisoner of Azkaban. Yeah. With the live yeah. orchestra. And yeah. I really wanted to go, but I couldn't make it. So, And we yeah. were talking to Rocco yesterday. He and did he uh, La La Land. The number one film, the t- two films I want to see with the live orchestra, Oppenheimer and La La Land. Like, oh my god, Oppenheimer would and, be insane. Yeah, like I remember there were some clips from uh, the Can You Hear the Music scene with the yeah. live orchestra. It's crazy. And I, yeah. I think Babylon would probably be just like a blast. Yeah, I they're showing Deathly Hollows Part One, which is my uh, favorite Harry Potter movie. Oh my uh, god, dude! Let's what? That's Part One. Yeah, because it's the most accurate to. I'm such a huge fan of the books. I've actually started this week. I'm doing my fifth reread of the books. That's a W. It's I haven't done it since 2020, and goddamn, they're good. Um. But it's the most accurate to the books. I feel you get the most character development, um, which I really... It's the one I just enjoy the most. I, like, if I, I'm going to sit down to watch a Harry Potter movie, it's either going to be that or Prisoner of Azkaban. Yeah, that's fair. I, uh, or I, or I, Half-Blood Prince. Half-Blood Prince bangs, dude. Dude, we need to do a Harry Potter episode because you're not going to like what I have to say about Half-Blood Prince. That's fine. That movie, I know, yeah, because I understand that, that there's problems uh, with two it. Two thirds of that movie is mid. But the cinematography in that film is. And it's, it's a beautiful movie. Oh my and god! And the third act is god tier. Um, yeah, for sure. Like, um, it it's such an intimate way to experience a film because, like, mm-hmm. yeah, the score it, score it's like Alex from the Shop by Shot guy the shop yeah. by shop bot he says the three most important things in film are music music and music he exactly. always says that and i think getting to hear that music from the instruments itself and like roko mm-hmm. was saying he got to see justin Hurwitz conduct it like that is the most pure form of seeing that movie that you could ever get yeah so i'm super excited to finally yeah. see that and that's and, awesome that you got to do yeah, that. yeah i think i'm gonna go again because they're doing deathly hollows part one and next month for the 35th anniversary they're doing the original tim burton batman oh that'd um, be so fun yeah so i think i might go see that too hell yeah uh, that's sick but yeah let's get into it oh one uh, quick thing yeah go i know ahead. i know he's not listening shout out george beating cancer hell I yeah said, dude fuck cancer Let's go, dude. That's awesome. Everyone go follow... What's his TikTok Movie and, Movies and Stuff 14. Yeah, everybody go follow George. He's one of the best content creators Beating for movies. Beating for a second time. What a chat. Out there. Uh, he was a huge inspiration. In all the Real Talk guys. He's huge inspirations yeah. for me. Yeah. Uh, as far as like making tiktok content which i don't really do anymore but uh and doing this podcast both like they're all huge inspirations george shout out to you man congratulations so, yeah congrats i had to say uh, that because that's such an exciting yeah, that's, thing that's good that's for a him, massive man. w um we love we love to see that uh i uh, saw uh tyler or seth or no sophie i don't know if you follow sophie uh, i might she's like pretty close with all of them she she tweeted out Dune 2 cured George's cancer. It probably (laughs) did. Uh, Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, that's a W. Um, We love you, you, George. Um, We love you, George. And if you ever stopped making content, I'd probably cry. I still quote, you've seen his TikTok where he's like, it's POV Seth's film reviews at the beginning of it. (laughs) And it's just him going, hello, people. And I'm like, that's so accurate. Uh, I love that video. It's still one of my favorites. Um, um, movie news. SAG yeah. Awards. The SAG Awards were this week. Yeah. Uh, well, I've got it, the winners pulled up here. First thing this cemented for us uh, is that Oppenheimer they, is sweeping the Oscars. Killian. 
is gonna win this best actor award he's won yeah. everything paul giamatti i'm sorry i loved you in the holdovers the holdovers yeah. is amazing and i wouldn't be disappointed if giamatti won but I, he's just they're just not no nobody else is gonna win in the categories so here's my thing i think i would be disappointed because that paul giamatti's roles tend to lend themselves to oscars more and killian's don't so i want and i know he said he doesn't give a shit about winning but this is his his award it, it really is like this yeah. is a it's just a master class performance um yeah and like uh it i again like it it cemented robert downey jr is taking home this oscar and it's oh not even God. close no it's not even close he won did it we, and then... did we have any doubts no so, of course not no it's crazy <laughs> no um let's before we talk about uh Lily Gladstone and Emma Stone. Yeah. Divine Joy Randolph is taking home this Oscar too. There's no doubt. She gets again. she's up for best supporting, right? Yeah, best supporting for the who's, holdovers. Uh who's she up again? She's up, up against, against Emily Blunt, um, and then uh America Ferreira from Barbie. Okay. Um uh Joe not Jody Foss Annette Benning from Niad. I can't yeah. remember who oh, else. Daniel Brooks. For the color oh, Daniel purple. Brooks for color purple, yeah. Uh, the only one that I see, I haven't seen Nyad or the color purple yet. Yeah, me either. Um, also, before I forget, big announcement. Remember, we are doing a our episode before the Oscars comes out. We'll be just we'll be skipping whatever we're doing that day and be doing a full Oscars deep dive into the entire ballot. Um, and we will be giving you our predictions for every category. Um, Heck yeah, it's gonna be fun. It is going to be fun. Um, the only one I really see maybe taking it from her is America Ferreira. Uh, I wish Emily Blunt would win because I do think she's the best in that category. She fucking killed it in Oppenheimer. Uh, the the scene when she turns it on uh, Jason Clark. Jason Clark is oh. it's just peak. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, just so like he. Heat it up in a little spoon, put it in a syringe, and just inject yeah. it into me. Oh yeah, my it, god, it's, it's amazing. And I find that one thing I really love about her performance is her depiction of her addiction with alcohol. Yeah, because yeah, it's a very so... subtle uh, piece of the story, and they they yeah. just like kind of hint at it. And I think it's a very powerful scene. Like you you have. Uh, the scene when she's at the trial and she drops her purse and the flask falls out and then uh the scene when killian comes home and the baby's crying and she's just sitting there with an empty bottle like for those that don't know this is an issue that's near and dear to both me and trey Mm -hmm. like uh so i thought that was like her performance was outstanding i i love both devan devon joy randolph and emily blunt i would be super happy if either of them won i um but i do think america ferrera has a slight chance i just think divide joy randolph is taking especially for just solely going off of who's winning the most awards leading yeah. up to the oscars it's divine joy Randolph. she's won everything and yeah uh, and she totally deserves it too oh she's absolutely amazing but barbie has the oscar scene america for speech in barbie is amazing i fucking it, it's sorry. so good i love that scene i i love barbie people know it i'm not afraid to admit it no barbie is and, amazing so, and if uh, you're if you're one of those guys, if you're one of those dumb fourteen year olds who's like, oh, Barbie's just for girls. It was so bad. It just it, 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 da, 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 da. grow up. Go, grow up, dude. It's a blast of a film. It's, it's visually, hilarious and also it's visually, oh, it's visually stunning. Oh my it's God. hilarious. Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling's like chemistry oh, and, so and, and 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 and. <laughs> Stuff like that. They were just both out. One of the hardest laughs I've had in the entire year is when Barbie goes up to the Mojo Dojo Casa and <laughs> she's like, Will you be my boyfriend? And he walks inside. Oh Sublime! Sublime! Oh my god, god dude. It's so funny. Oh it's my. so good. It I is love Barbie. I yeah. laugh so and the whole two thousand one opening. Oh I, my god. Nobody in it's... my theater <laughs> understood it because I was with a bunch oh. of teen I saw it opening day, so it was all like teenage girls. Yeah. And I was the only one just sitting there just cackling yeah. at the intro. And it, everybody's like, what the fuck is this guy laughing at? One of my other favorite scenes in Barbie is uh, 
when all they're they're trying to like gaslight the 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 Kens into like thinking every Barbie loves them, and she's like, "Well, tell me about the Godfather." And <laughs> the the Kens are just and they're all God, playing dude. that Rob Thomas song on their guitar. The yeah, well I will, and then it's like, oh, that scene is hilarious. So yeah. yeah. Um, I, Shout I out Rob hope... Thomas for singing on one of True. Santana's underrated bangers. Oh, smooth. smooth. Cause it's, it's so smooth. Yeah, um, so I do hope, I hope Barbie takes home at least one Oscar. I do. Because yes. it's it's really great and it deserves some recognition. Um, so yeah, the SAG Awards kind of cemented. Also, Pedro Pascal dropped like one of the biggest like mood me POV God, I things lo- ever. Dude, I love him He so rocks much. up he was not expecting to win. He's wearing this like unbuttoned white shirt and he goes, yeah. I'm going to have a panic attack and go home. <laughs> like he's like, I'm too drunk for I'm this. A little, yeah. What a Chad. Like he, you could tell he was like, yeah, succession's taking this home. I'm just here for a good time. And then, yeah. So, yeah. Um, um, but yeah. And the biggest thing that came out of this, who's going to win best actress. Yes. And we will get into this more deeply when, uh, our Oscars episode comes yeah, around. Trey hasn't seen Poor Things, so... I have not seen Poor Things yet, so I can't comment, but Evan, yes. who do you think is okay. Because we've had Emma Stone win at the BAFTAs, we've had Lily Gladstone won at the Golden Globes. What nope, are your other way around. What? Uh, Lily Gladstone won at the SAG, Emma Stone won at the BAFTAs and the golden globes but it's because golden globes is separated and lily gladstone did win at the golden globes it's because they separate drama and comedy right oh yeah Um, so so i was right and wrong at the same time so let me see here so we have a very close it's it's, yeah it's obvious like all these other actresses that are sitting in the best actress uh in a leading role category have zero like I I haven't seen any of these. God, I have. God, uh, have I you really seen Killers need to get. Flower Moon? I really need to get on my Oscars. Wait, watches. you haven't? Seen, have you seen Killers of the Flower Moon? Yeah, I have. Okay, so what I'll say about, I mean, I have a Yorgos bias. He's my mm-hmm. second favorite director of all time, and yeah. I think that the uh, there's two things I want to say about Emma Stone's performance in Poor Things. Number one, it's flawless. It is hilarious and sad and introspective, and it grows so much with the movie because the movie starts and she's like a child. She can't barely put a sentence together. And it grows into the sophisticated person who is reflecting on life and society as a whole. But yeah, the most insane thing about this performance, they did not shoot this film in order to shoot this film. So... The crazy thing is that Emma Stone had to bounce back and forth between being a child and being a fully grown adult and being a child. It's crazy because they're totally different people. Um, so, yeah, I think Emma Stone's performance is l- legendary. Also, Lily Gladstone bringing in a extremely nuanced and subdued performance that is so impactful and heartbreaking. Yeah, um, and the thing about Lily Gladstone, I... I can look. I even said this when it came out. I can respect all the stuff that Scorsese put into Killers of the Flower Moon. I can respect that it. it's one of his more well made films. I can respect that it's a great film. It wasn't for me. I did not like it. I gave it three oh, really? stars. Wow. But uh, all three of those stars go to the scenes where Lily Gladstone was in it. Mm. She was so good. She was so damn good. And I loved her in that so much. I feel like you're overshadowed or like you're just. What about De Niro cooking up one of the most devious performances ever? See, it wasn't even like it's not even like probably not even top five De Niro oh, performances wow. for me. Interesting. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we'll we'll talk more about it in our Oscars episode. Yeah. Let's uh, let's keep going really quick. Warner Brothers is no longer pursuing a merger with Paramount. Good. Keep the monopolies out of here. Yeah. Um, Bob Marley's One Love has been killing it at the box office. I saw Nathan's Um, spreadsheet. Shout out Nathan for bringing the box office updates in the Real Talk Discord. Yeah, man. Kills it. Kind of surprising. I mean, the movie's not getting great reviews. I haven't seen it, so I can't comment on it. Um, Mm -hmm. But I mean, biopics are good money. Um, So, I mean, good. we, we love to see movies make money. We want to see people succeed. Yeah. Something I want to touch on 
Unless you had any more about One Love. Uh, no, no. Um, have you seen Beef? Yes, I have. Very, so, very, 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 very good. Yeah, so we got some early castings for Beef. I don't know. Did you see this? No. We have two so like couples. like a season two? Yeah, season two. We have castings okay. for two couples. The yeah. first couple, Charles Melton w. and Kaylee Spaney from Priscilla. Okay, yeah. The second couple, Jake G, the fucking goat, and Anne Hathaway reprising their relationship from Love and Other Drugs. This is going to be crazy. Well, not only Love and Other Drugs, but also Brokeback Mountain. Yes, and Brokeback Mountain. So, this season, already, I'm sold. Beef season one yes, is, give pe- it to is, me. is peak. So, I'm very, very excited for this. I don't this. know how they're going to... Pat, like I think it's gonna be an anthology, so it it's like no, yeah, like American Horror Story or yeah. True Detective, but I just don't think I don't know how they're gonna like rise above. See how good season one. Yeah, is. I think it's a really interesting idea showing conflicts that push people just over the edge, and I think there's room to explore with other storylines. So I'm really really excited for this. Yeah, um, anything with Jake Gyllenhaal, I'm in. Yeah, and beef season one is peak, like you said. So yeah, that's gonna be uh, stick. In other TV news, show, we uh, our first Shogun. episodes. Shogun, have you watched it yet? I haven't watched it yet because it came out this morning. I was at work. I need to watch it. I love samurai I know, stuff, I'm... and the reviews have been crazy. Yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, Certified also, fresh at one hundred percent. That's insane. Uh, also. I just saw the trailer for Park Chan Wook's new TV show with oh my RDJ. God, dude. I just saw that trailer for the first time yesterday. Wow. That looks excellent. The sympathizer, bro. Oh my god, dude. It's I'm gonna be so, so excited. Good. I can't wait. I mean, really anything from Park Chan Wook, I'm in. Um Yeah. It's gonna be peak. I'm very, yeah. very excited. Yeah, I'm um, excited for that as well. Uh let's see what else we got here. I, we got a really interesting quote from Christopher Nolan that I want to pull up really quick. He said, the iconic line in the dark Knight haunts him because he didn't write it. It kills me. It is in reference to the, uh, you either die a hero or you or live, live long, long enough, enough to see to yourself, see yourself become, become, the become the villain. It says it kills me because the line, it's the line that most resonates. I was like, all right, I'll keep it in there, but I don't really know what it means. Is that a thing? And, uh, the quote continues. I don't have this on my Twitter right now, but he's like, the longer I live, the more I believe it. And I think that's really interesting that Jonathan Nolan wrote that line. Mm-hmm. And he, it's something that just sticks in his mind. It's really, really cool. The, yeah. the respect they have for each other is just awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's the GOAT. Chris Nolan, uh, man. What a, ch- what a chat. Uh, yeah, the GOAT. What do you have next? Um, we got a new Civil War trailer. I am... <sighs> I with, uh, every, with every day, I grow more and more excited for this film. I have so much excitement for this movie. Number one, I love Alex Garland. I've never been a doubter. I like men. Cue the, what do you mean by that meme? Shut up, Alan. Uh, <laughs> I, that movie's cool. I like it a lot. I give it four stars. Um, Annihilation... I don't know where the dislike for this movie came from. It's a five star yeah. for me. Oh, it's uh, immaculate. I like it more than Ex Machina. I will say that. Ex Machina is very highly rated too. I love that. Mm-hmm. The first trailer, I was sold on the first trailer. I was like, this looks like the MW2 campaign put into a movie. Like, feed yeah. it to me. I need it. So this, And also, this is the first A24 movie being released in IMAX, which is sick. Yeah. Really, really cool. It's got a stacked cast. I, yeah, I want it. I need it. Yeah, I'm quite. I'm quite excited. Yeah. Um, for it. Uh, that was all I had for movie news. Yeah, Do you have I'll rattle else? through. I have a few other uh, just yeah. posts from discuss. Uh, Ryan Gosling confirmed to perform. I'm just Ken live at the Oscars. W. w. That's gonna be super fun. Um, yeah. Denis came out with some quotes. Uh, one of them I don't have pulled up, so I won't touch on it now. But the other one I do have it says, "Young people want longer films. If they pay, they want something substantial. Think of Oppenheimer. It's a three-hour R-rated movie about nuclear physics, and it's mostly talking. But the public was young. That was my that that was the movie of the year by far for my kids. Interesting, because you see a lot of yapping about Oppenheimer being boring. Maybe it's a silent majority." Or, sorry, 
yeah. loud minority. Um, yeah. So I, I appreciate him saying that. He also said something about TV is plaguing the film industry. Yeah, fuck off. Um, next. Ty West says he is almost done with editing on Maxine. It's coming along so far so good. I'm very excited for this. He has compared it to a Giallo film. I know you haven't experimented with Dario Argento yet, Trey, but mm-hmm. inject it into my veins because Argento is peak. Yeah. The next, we have to talk about it. You skipped over it. The Accountant 2 is officially moving oh, forward and will be this. filming in California this year. Oh my god, give it to me, dude. Give dude, it to it's me! It's so good. It's on your watch list from the last couple of weeks, right? Yeah. Yeah, dude. in uh, the... Is John Bernthal, is he going to be in this one? I am i don't know yet. They, that's all they said. They, it's moving forward. It's coming out. It's filming this year. I love The Accountant. Let's see, I'm gonna, my phone? I'm going to re-watch it soon so we can talk about it. Cause I haven't seen oh, it dude, long it's, time. it's so peak. It's awesome. It's, and it's got yeah. a peak Radiohead needle drop. Uh, yeah, so I'm really excited for that. Yeah, let's see. Account- Accountant 2 has a letterbox page. Um... Um, where it yeah, has some of the cast I, on it. God, sorry, I got so many news stories I want to touch on. Okay. Yeah, I'm very, very have you, excited. Have you seen Godzilla Minus One yet? No, I haven't, but okay. it's on my watch list. Okay, yeah, John Bernthal is going to be an accountant. W. Too. Yeah. W. Um, so Takashi Yamazaki wants to have a Godzilla fight another kaiju in Godzilla Minus One sequel. Uh, w. That's gonna be sick. Another one. Glenn Powell says that him and Sydney Sweeney have been reading scripts to find their next project together. W. They got great chemistry. Anyone they but do. you is surprisingly funny. Yeah. So yeah, that's cool. Uh, another extreme W for the cinema. Poor things has passed one hundred million dollars worldwide. W. Go gross. That's sick. Go um, go one, indie films. Yeah. One I want to touch on. Tom Cruise has been cast in the next Alejandro G. Inaratu film. What has he done? He did Gravity. He did Birdman. He has done... Uh, no, Alfor- Alfor- Alfonso oh, sorry. Cuaron. Oh, uh, Alfonso Cuaron. Cuaron did Gravity. Um, yeah, uh, he did He did Birdman. Oh, is he the same guy that did Amoris Peros? That's the only one I think I've seen from him. Um, you haven't seen Birdman? No, I haven't seen it yet. Oh my god, it's peak. Let's see. Let me. Yeah, Birdman. sorry, not gravity. He did the Revenant. Yeah. Uh, okay. Birdman. Bitiful. I haven't seen that. Twenty One Grams. Amoros Peros. Yes, he did. Yeah, that. that's the only one from him that I've Goodness. seen. Is it good? He did Babel as well, which I've heard good. Oh things. yeah, I've heard it good. So uh, yeah, I want to see Tom Cruise making more. Uh, dramatic movies because he's a great actor and he doesn't flex yeah. it enough. So awesome! He's a great action actor, and he's also a great actor. Look at look at yeah. the firm. Look at uh, eyes wide shut. Yeah. Like let's let's come on. Let's stop beating around the bush. He's peak. He's a great actor. Um, yeah, that's all I had. So cool. Oh, cool, cool, um, cool. Last thing that I'll transition to. Uh, Dune two came out. And yes. everyone is loving it. It is currently yeah. the highest rated film on IMDb. It's at a 4.5 on Letterboxd. It's 22nd, I think, above Goodfellas. Yeah. Um, I've seen it. I saw it on Sunday. It's a masterpiece. It's give better us than your the first one. spoiler free thoughts. I will give you very brief spoiler free thoughts so you can rest assured I won't say shit about anything. This movie is mesmerizing. It is a immense achievement in filmmaking it's awe-inspiring it it's genuinely crazy the scope of this film that that's the main thing the scope of this film is nuts yeah and i think that's what denis is so good at yeah uh because he creates these films you see it in all of these films where the scope and the scale yeah. is so massive but you're still able to form these intimate relationships yeah. and connections to the characters which is something that not a lot of directors are able to do 
Yeah. Um, and you see that in, like, Arrival. You see it in Sicario. Yeah. You, you see it in Prisoners. In the first Dune. Like, these... The scale of these movies is massive, but you still feel like you are getting, like, peak character development. Yeah, and what I will say, uh, as deep as I will go without spoilers, this film amps the action up on every level, yet... It is extremely nuanced, and the the intimate character moments are very deep, and the development for every single character is amazing. Fade, Austin Butler fucking killed it in this role. He yeah. is amazing. Everyone is fantastic. Christopher Nolan still made... Sorry, not Christopher Nolan. Christopher Walken still made me laugh because he talks like normal Christopher Nolan Walken. Yeah. It's, it's immaculate. I can't wait for everyone to see it. It's we easily my favorite Denis movie. To control the spice. Paul! Paul! Paul. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, visually stunning, the score is, uh, I would say, top three. Hans Zimmer, maybe top two. Top w. one, who knows? It's peak. Uh, yeah, go see it on Friday. Buy tickets. Believe the hype is that good. Yeah, that's all I'll say. We'll talk about it more once Trey watches it. Yeah, I'm gonna go see it again probably this weekend. Um, yes, and look forward to a full Dune episode, Dune two episode. We'll do a spoiler free section and a spoiler section because there's a lot to talk about in that movie, yeah. and I cannot wait to fucking do an episode about it. It's awesome. I carried this watch <laughs> in my ass for seven years. I love Christopher Walken because he's a great that, actor. That but... might be the best scene yeah. in Pulp Fiction. Oh, oh yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm super excited for you to watch it, and I'm super excited to talk about it. Shout out to Oscar, Remy, and Ryan who are struggling day by day in the Discord, the Real Talk Discord, seeing yeah. these five star reviews roll in. I have 16 mutuals have, that have logged this film on Letterboxd. Only one of them has given it below a five, God. and it's Ace. Fuck you, what, Ace. What did he give it? He gave it a four and a half. Raise it, you coward. Oh, man. Um, yeah, so that's all I'll say. I don't want to say anything else because I'll probably just want to start talking about spoilers. So let's yeah. get into Ratatouille. Uh, Trey, do you yes. have the number for this? I believe... I want to say we're almost at 210. We've got to be. Um, let's see. Uh, this is the wrong server. Here it is. Uh so Ratatouille is number two eleven. Um, I was like right on the money. Hell yeah, man. Um, yeah. So first one we got today on our IMDb list is Ratatouille. Uh, one of my personal favorite. Uh, this is Pixar, right? This isn't Pixar. I think this is just Disney it's animation. Disney, yeah. Um, Dude, one if of it my was Pixar would be so low on my list. One of my Spoilers. personal favorite animated films. Um, from my favorite animated film director, the goat himself, Brad Bird, uh, yeah, it's who, just who also did a forgotten banger, Tomorrowland. Um, I need to see that. I remember the trailer was really cool. And dude, I remember seeing that like three times in the theater and being oh, like, really? dude, this movie bangs. I need to watch that. Uh, I haven't watched it since I, since it came out, which I would have been like 12. Yeah. Uh, but I do remember quite enjoying it. Um, I just saw the box office six hundred and twenty three million. That's crazy. Yeah. Almost six hundred twenty four. That's a lot. Good, good, uh, good stuff. Yeah, you got Clooney, man. It's 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 no no good. no for Ratatouille. Oh shit, we're still talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not. Tomorrowland is probably not that high. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, Ratatouille four point two overall in Letterboxd. I'm assuming an eight point one on IMDb because we've been doing eight. Yeah, IMDb rating of eight point one. It's a 96 Metacritic score, um, which is extremely high. Although what I'm not, this? I'm 90, 96. What? Yeah. On Metacritic? That's crazy. Yeah, but like you're still, you're still high up. Like you, this you don't like hate this movie. You, you I this movie to four out of five. Your, yeah, based off of your rating, you still really enjoy this movie. I do. Um, and it, I mean, obviously, it's a blast. Yeah. Um, we can do general thoughts and then get yeah. a bit deeper. Release in 2007. 
Yeah. So you got Patton Oswalt giving an amazing voice acting performance. Lou Romano, uh, Ian Holm, Brian Dennehy, uh, Peter O'Toole is in this, uh, who big star from Lawrence Arabia. And if you don't know who Ian Holm is, he is Bilbo Baggins um, from the Lord of the Rings movies. Uh, so we got Bilbo Baggins in this movie. Uh, uh, we, we just got a lot of great ingredients <laughs> that go into making a great movie. Um, I was just looking up what other animated movies came out this year. Surf's Up came out this year, and Surf's Up bodies this movie. I I haven't watched Surf's Up. Dude, you need to rewatch in it. A it while. Is, it's crazy. It's so but good. I don't... I know I know it's great. Like I have super high respect for that one. I love love the, that movie the soundtrack for surfs up is in it goes crazy yeah you got yeah. an incubus needle drop like, yeah i was right gonna say beginning. i was watching oh so my I was, god i was watching the film scoop that one day that came out and cash mm-hmm. was talking about how you watch surfs up and there's that incubus needle drop when shia labeouf's like everyone's trying to tell me how to be but I'm, no, I'm going to be me. And he's sailing away on this piece of... And then it's just like... Tomorrow, oh my god, it's so good. The, the, the titles, credits are to Holiday by Green Day. Like, oh my god, Jeff Bridges bringing in peak. Yeah, dude. I mean, it's a great... I just don't god, know if it good. would overtake Ratatouille for me. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, let's get into it. Uh, opening thoughts. Evan, yeah. Okay. Give it to this, us. this is gonna sound harsh, and I will talk more about how I love this movie, and I think it's really nice, feel good, fun movie about the love of food. My instant reactions when I was watching this was, I wish I was watching Chef, because I think Chef is a better food movie about okay. the love of food. I still really enjoy this movie. I think it's a great feel good movie. The animation is insane for Yeah, this is a beautiful looking movie. It is a beautiful movie. The, you see the emotion in people's face. There's the the critic ego. Oh my god, his reactions are hysterical. Yeah. They're so funny. Um Yeah, I I think it's it's really funny. Patton Oswalt is awesome in this. Uh it, it just really hits the mark for what it was trying to do. You want a funny, feel-good comedy about a bunch of characters that are kind of lost in life. And, like, you get Remy, who loves food, but he's stuck as a rat and he can't do anything. And then Linguini, who is just kind of, like, doesn't know what he's doing. And it all just comes together in this great, wholesome uh piece. And it's, yeah, it's predictable, but who cares? Most Disney movies are, and that's fine it's not a fault this yeah yeah, it's just a fun time i i really enjoy it the 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 cooking stuff like i cook a lot and seeing the love of food put to film is like seeing my own emotions put on screen and i love that it makes me feel really happy so yeah i i really enjoyed this movie yeah have you seen uh burnt no but i really want to that's a good one i do really yeah. enjoy that one ha- have you seen boiling point it's not a feel-good movie but it's about the love of food yeah, no i haven't i just have a okay. and this is the same reason i don't watch i watch the two first episodes of the bear and it's just i have a hard time with it because i've worked in kitchens yeah. like that where it, like most kitchens are like that where everybody's yelling and yeah and, and it's like the bear, the movie, the scenes where they're in the kitchen, it's just pure yeah. stress, and do that's you, how it is in real life. Do you and know it, I just what have a boiling hard point time. Is? What? Do you know what boiling point is? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, it's incredible. It, it's a monumental film. It's one of those movies where it's like it's one take, but it's not. It looks like one take. It's actually one take. Mm-hmm. It, and it's it's like the cooking scenes in the bear, but the entire time it's amazing. Stephen Cramp knockout performance yeah it's great um yeah, i just have yeah. a hard time with that because it's i get like, it yeah i've been there and i'm just like bah. yeah but tell me more about why you love ratatouille uh yeah i mean it's it's the same thing that i'll say every time i talk about a brad bird movie uh he's easily like top 15 directors for me um he has three five stars for me uh, and then, what do I have Incredibles 2 at? I have Incredibles 2 at a 4. Um, I was going to say, do you have this over uh, Incredibles? No, this is my number 3. 
Iron Giant is number one. Okay. Easily. You've seen Iron Giant, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'll give a funny story about the Iron Giant when you're yeah, done. Yeah, five stars. Okay, of course. It's peak. Um, um, yeah. Also, shout out Brad Bird cooking Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. Yeah. Brad Bird is just the, the guy. I feel like that movie... I mean, it's tough because this is sidetracked and I don't really care. This episode's going to be longer. That's fine. Yeah. We haven't yapped in a while. Me and Trey need to get it out. <laughs> um, Ghost Protocol is kind of slept on because, like, Fallout has so many memorable action sequences, and so does Fallout. Rogue Nation. Fallout is the only one I've sat and watched all the way through. What? I told you this a few days ago. Oh, you... T- shit, yeah. I don't remember. Sorry. And it's really just Henry Cavill revving up his arms. Yeah, it is. But, oh my god, bro. We gotta watch Mission Impossible 3. I adore that movie. Yeah. Shout out to J.J. Uh, Abrams. Um, Ghost Protocol yeah. is awesome. Like, it's it's a really fun action movie. And also, Tom yeah. Cruise cl- climbs the Burj Khalifa in it. Yeah, uh, but again, I'll say the same thing I say every time I talk about a Brad Bird movie. Uh, the themes that he instills in all four of his animated films of being true to yourself um, and not letting those around you decide who you're going to be and what you do with your life. It is something, it is a theme that is very, very clear and present throughout all four. Not only, not even just Incredibles 1, but Incredibles 2 as well uh is just being yourself and not letting the people around you decide who you're gonna be yeah um and i i just i love that i think the animation in all three of his films they're all or all four of his animated films are so so different um and so lovely and beautiful in their own way uh especially this one all the shots we get in this of paris and 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 um, especially that shot where Remy escapes the sewer and he's going through all the houses and stuff. Oh, that yeah. whole sequence is Dude, just that outstanding scene with the, to watch. With the grandma's house is so funny. Oh, it's so good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I just, just have the fucking. She got the pumpy ready. Loaded. Yeah, dude. Uh, also, crazy way to deal with rats pulling out yeah, a pump shotgun. That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, but yeah, I mean. I think there's also a lot of nostalgia that plays into this for me. Same thing with Incredibles. Same thing with Iron Giant. I grew up watching these kinds of movies. Yeah. I grew up watching Disney movies just like everybody else. And so it always kind of send me back to like this innocence and, and, and this kind of, like you said, it's feel good. It's happy. It works out in the end, just like every other Disney movie. Yeah, but it's again, like warm, it's like a warm hug. Watching yeah. These again, it's not a fault. Like when we no, say that it's predictable, not. And it's and it's uh, and it's like the same. That's not a fault. No, sometimes I, that's what you need is something predictable, something that you know is going to have a happy ending. And, that's, and yeah, it's an interesting thought because like feel good movies, you want when you go into a feel good movie, you don't want twists and turns. Exactly. You want to know where the story is going and just kind of have fun. Chef is a prime example of that. It's. All of the conflict in that movie happens in the first 15-20 minutes, and then it's just like, wrap me up in some Cubano sandwiches, and I will be smiling I love, forever. I love a good Cubano. Dude, I gotta when send it, you pictures. I made whenever some homemade you ones. Come, whenever you come down here and stay with me, there's a place near us called Bunk Sandwiches. That was actually on diners, drive-ins, and dives. Oh, yeah. And Guy Fieri gave it, like, the best Cubano in Hell the Pacific yeah. Northwest. Uh, yeah, we gotta I'll, go get a Cubano. I'll, I'll make advance. you Cubanos, too. I, I made Please. Cubanos. I love it when I, people make I made, for me. I made homemade Cuban bread buns, and then I yeah. made the the pork. It took me four days, because you brine it, and then you marinate it, and it. I got up at, like, 5.30 in the morning, the zest, oranges, and lemons, and, oh. That's I watched incredible. Chef, and then I, I, I said to my mom, I was like, I need the credit card, because she kind of was like... Whatever you want to cook for me, I'll pay for it. If you're cooking, I'll pay for it. Cause she really embraced like my love of cooking. That's awesome. I was like, I'm I I need the credit card. It's probably gonna be expensive because like I need to buy a bottle of rum and I need like a bunch of oranges and lemons and I know all this stuff. And she was like, Yep, no worries. So how'd they yeah, turn out? She, oh, they were incredible. I'll send you pictures. They were Hell yeah. Absolutely incredible. So yeah, I find I mean back to Ratatouille. Again, this isn't my favorite comfort movie, but still, you find just a level of like hominess with these kinds of films. And I, uh-huh. even though I give this a four star, I could see myself going back to it easily 
Oh, a thousand percent. Because it's it's just and a again, really. I I have this at a five star. Yeah, I, this is a five star film right. for me. But again, we, we talk about like your four star rating as if it's like this huge travesty. You know, it's like when people talk about like how I have the Batman at my number five uh, Batman rated movie. <laughs> I'm not saying that's a bad Batman movie. I still have it at a four and a half. I think it's an excellent film. I think that it is the quintessential like Batman movie. That is the Batman movie. Yeah, it's not my favorite. It's I don't a, know but if it's, it's a four that and a as half. much as that you have the Adam West Batman over it. It's but that's just me, you know. And it doesn't oh, no, negate it, yeah. anything that I like about the Batman movie. It's just I like this more. Yeah, shit, man. You, you know? don't have to justify it to me. I have the Beekeeper at five stars, and yeah, we're gonna exactly. talk about 2012 later in. Or what we've been watching, peak. and it's peak. Um, yeah, I I really love Ryan's movie. This the soundtrack, the score is all really great, and it's I love uh-huh. the scene when Remy is uh, in the sewers and he comes up and he realizes he's been underneath Paris the entire time, and yeah. you get to see the joy in his eyes. Like it's just such a a happy movie. It's really really great. Yeah, yeah, it's I'm super glad I rewatched it. I haven't seen this movie since high school. Like in foods class and it it just it's it's great i yeah i'll revisit it i could see it going up in rating honestly um yeah it's it's awesome brad bird cooked it's it's just a great time yeah um i don't think there's too much else to say at least for me um Uh, does this belong in the imdb top 250 yeah i do think it's i mean (sighs) this is a conversation for another day i don't particularly think disney movies are anywhere near as good as pixar i I like pixar movies way more um well disney movie pixar movies are i know i I know but like it's like it's like the squares and rectangles yeah (laughs) all pixar movies are disney movies but not all disney movies are pixar exactly so um i do think it belongs there it's one of my favorite disney movies for sure um yeah it's great for sure yeah. Even though it's a four star, I would a hundred percent keep it around this two hundred range. Yeah, me as well. Um, I might have it a little bit higher. Yeah, closer to the one fifty range, right. but I do think it belongs somewhere on the top two fifty. Yeah. Um. Uh. But yeah, go check out Ratatouille. It's streaming on Disney Plus. Yeah. Um. I actually, I, I dude, I had to watch it on F movies because really? I couldn't log into my Disney. Oh house. my god, that's it sucks. was being a pain in my butt. So I was uh, like, I'm just gonna pull it up. Tragic. Uh, F uh, movies. F movies is definitely not a website where you can watch movies for free. Yeah. And we are definitely not endorsing that right now. No. No. Why would we ever do that? No. For stuff like F movies, her a watch, and F two movies, yeah. don't do that. Go go to the big capitalist corporations and pay exactly their money. yeah <laughs> yeah it's definitely those three sites are definitely not sites where you can watch basically any movie ever <laughs> for free and I definitely wouldn't recommend turning on a VPN when you use these sites that's not something I would recommend yeah. absolutely not um, um and so now as we told you guys we are doing two uh imdb films every time so now I'm let so us excited. get into number 210 we've officially the average film enjoyer podcast has officially made it through 40 films on the imdb list uh kind of crazy uh what's number 200 <clears throat> i wonder and i wonder uh mr smith goes to washington um <laughs> let's go no, I've actually heard good things about that. I never dear, heard the dear director. Oh, you're muted, Trey. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but it sounds like there's maybe a hurricane oh, going mother. on. Oh, mother. Oh, no, we're good now. You're good. You're good. Okay. We're good. All right, I'm just going to count us back in. Yeah. But Deer Hunter, I'm excited to talk about that. Oh, it's so that, good. I can't that... wait to watch it again. We'll talk about it in a sec. Yeah. (laughs) 
Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, I just don't know what's happening right now. Um, yeah, Deer it's Hunter's good now. Peak. That's easily my favorite De Niro role. It's Peak, yeah. He's Dude, I watched that and walking. <laughs> okay, count us back in, we'll talk about it quick. Yeah, that final sequence, man. Breaks God. my heart. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let's get... Uh, three, two, one. <laughs> Um, so, uh, as we said earlier, we're going to be do- doing two movies every episode now. So we're going to get into number 210. Dude, uh, I am next, next week. I'm, we have to watch the big Lebowski. I've seen it before. Oh I, yeah. I, I did. I, I did not like it the first time I watched it. So we'll see. I told, uh, Ben, we'd bring him on for big oh, yeah. Lebowski. Dude, so many people big love Lebowski this movie. and Tokyo story. Yeah. I was just about to look up Tokyo story. I don't know if I've heard of this. No, me neither. Um, but number Holy two, smokes. number two ten on our IMDb top two fifty list is the dad movies, the dad movie of all dad movies. Yeah. Ford versus Ferrari. Oh my god! Now, Ford versus Ferrari, directed by uh, the goat himself, James Mangold. Let's uh, pretend Dial of Destiny does not exist. Exactly. The goat James Mangold. Uh, released, amazing movies. Released in 2019. He did Walk the Line, too? Yes. Oh, yeah. my God. It's, this guy is truly yeah. the goat. He's cooking. Uh, f- released in 2019. Star- debatably one of the best years in film. Um, yep. Starring a stacked cast, might I say. Uh, oh, Christian God. Bale, Matt Damon, John Bernthal. Let me tell you uh, something. D- let me. Hey, let hey, me tell you let something, let me, John Bernthal. Let me, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something. Here, I got, I got something to tell you. Let me tell you something. Um, Josh Lucas, Noah Jupe, uh, Tracy Letts is in this. Uh, who? Ray McKinnon, uh, who is a delight as always. Who plays uh, the? Oh. The, the pit stop dude who helps rebuild the cars. Do you know what I'm talking Ray about? Ray McKinnon. Phil. Ray McKinnon. Okay, I didn't know his name. He's great. Yeah, he's so good. Uh, this movie has a 3.9 overall on Letterboxd. Uh, 8.1 IMDb rating. Yeah, it's too low. Um, it has, holy cow, 5.3 thousand fans. That's insane. That's insanely high. Um, what is fans? People who have it in their top letterbox top four. Oh, um, that's a W. This is Christian Bale at his most British. Um, Even though he's not British. <laughs> yeah. He is, is Wait, maybe he is. He is British in real life. I thought he was uh, like Irish or something. Oh, no, he is British. Yeah, my bad. Sorry. Yeah, Sorry, I'm Christian. Right. Don't, don't beat me up. Uh, yeah, he's going he's gonna to come to your house and be like, I'm British. And then just... Hey, <sighs> Just yeah. beat on you. Um, so, Evan, the first opening yeah. thoughts for Ford okay. Ferrari. Opening thoughts. I saw this movie in IMAX when it first came out. It is crazy. The the engines like this. I I was watching this. I was thinking about Ferrari, which I had watched a couple months ago, and I was like, I love Ferrari. I think it's really great. This movie's racing scenes because. Ferrari has a couple racing scenes that are amazing. It's mm-hmm. not enough. This movie bodies Ferrari. I want to drop Ferrari from a 4.5 to a 4 after this, because I have Ford vs. Ferrari in a 5. It, oh, God. The, the racing scenes in Ford vs. Ferrari are electric, and the best part of these racing scenes is you get to see Carroll Shelby and uh, and Kershaw Bale, I'm blanking on it, Ken Miles, sorry, just having the time of their life. Uh, yeah, especially Ken Miles. Like, it, it, Christian Bale is dropping these witty one-liners, like he's talking to the car, like it's one of his old ladies. It's hysterical. Come yeah. on, love. Like, it's uh, it's so funny. And even though Carol Shelby's not racing, like the scene when he takes Henry Ford the second in a in a oh, drive so in the, good the gt is hysterical and they stop and he just starts sobbing like this movie is so funny yet it's dramatic the performances are great it's lighthearted up until the final scene which we'll talk about later um yeah and it it's just a 
really enjoyable movie, and it's a feel-good movie that kind of... It talks about, like, not necessarily being the best, but just enjoying what you're doing and being happy, which I think is important. Uh, and we'll mm-hmm. talk about it more at the ending, because we'll, we'll be uh, spoiling this, by the way. Um, yes. The vibes of this movie are immaculate. The soundtrack, sorry, yeah. the score, is it's just peak. It, it, it plops truly you, is. It plops you straight in the 60s and 70s. It's awesome. Uh, the, every car, you're just like, frick, man, I want to be driving that car right now. Like, Carol's driving around in this, like, sick-ass blue car. I'm not sure what model it is. I think but it was a... Oh, shit. It might be a... It might be a, a Shelby Cobra. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know older cars that well, but uh, yeah. Sorry, I, lost my connection there for a second. I saw this with my dad, and my dad instilled very young in me his love of racing. I've been to Formula One races and stuff like that. I love yeah that kind of stuff. It's super fun. So I saw it with him, and he was like on cloud nine, sobbing at the end. He was just so happy. Like it really is the ultimate dad movie, and it's just it so is. fun. The performances are great. John Barenthal kills it as Lee Iacocca and oh, uh, what's his name? The beep, Josh beep. J- Josh Lucas. What Jeb, a, oh my dude, god, he just the, top top so ten good. most punchable characters in fiction. Oh, uh, or yeah. I guess in real life, who knows? He's a real dude. But yeah, it's it's just a blast. And yeah, this movie is long. It is over two and a half hours, or like right around that two and a half hour mark. It bla- it races by, pun intended. Like, <laughs> dude, me and, me and Trey watched this movie together, and yeah, it it like it feels like a two hour movie, even maybe less. It truly like, does. It really blasts past. Like, the first like half hour, it takes a little bit to like pick up. But yeah. then once you make it past like the first thirty minutes, you're uh, you're it's it flies by. Yeah, it, it's just a blast. Like the moment that they, I mean, even leading up to it, like I think a rewatch it's even better because you kind of know what to expect. But like the moment they start deciding, like Lee is like, I want to be a Ford racer. I know. I'm sorry. I'm getting into past initial thoughts, but like the moment that Lee Iacocca is like, yeah, let's make a race car. Uh. It, it just yeah. takes off, and they get Ken, and they start building the Ford GT. It's it's just so much fun. Yeah, um, yeah, I love this film. Um, earlier on, I don't. You were here, Evan. This was actually one of your first episodes. Uh, we reviewed Rush. Yeah. Um, with Chris Hemsworth and Daniel Bruhl. What I think happened is. James Mangold saw Rush and he was like, okay, now I'm going to make like an even better version of that. And more uh, fun because Rush is super sad. <laughs> it's so depressing. Um, yeah, this movie is a blast. The sound design is unbelievable. Oh. All the racing scenes are just so cool. Uh, it, 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 Christian Bale and me and we were, we were talking about this while we were watching that, this movie. Christian Bale and Matt Damon's dynamic is just so fun. It's, it's such a blast. It's uh, so funny because, like, you you see Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, and they're boys. Like, they've been boys since they were kids, and they're just, like, so happy together. And you see Christian Bale and Matt Damon, and you would assume that they've been boys, like, since day one because their chemistry is just so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and it, it there's just so many nice little throwaway – like they just get the dad chuckles where you're like, <laughs> yeah. Um, like when, like you were talking about when Henry Tracy Letts, Henry Ford, the second gets in the car and he's, and, uh, Matt Damon's character, Carol Shelby, he goes, are you ready, sir? And he's like, son, the, uh, the name on that steering wheel should tell you that I was born ready. <laughs> and he goes, hit it. And Matt Damon goes, boy," And you can see Matt Damon just hits it. And you can see Tracy lets his face just goes. And it's just like, oh, dude, this movie is such a blast. Um, The racing scenes are immaculate. The scenery, it looks really good. I know a lot of this is most likely CG. Um, It looks so good. Um, None of it really looks CG. Uh, I was going to say, I'm going to pull up the. Oh yeah, here we go. In preparation for his role, Christian Bale will take race driving lessons. Uh, of course he did. He's the goat. 
Oh, Matt Damon said the number one reason he wanted to do this movie is to work with Christian Bale. Hell yeah, dude. Love that. Yeah. Um, uh, let me ask you something. I have Christian Bale in my top five actors of all time. Yeah, it's not a question. Okay, you agree. He, yeah. The dedication that that man puts into every... I don't think he's ever turned in a bad performance. <laughs> and like... <laughs> Like, like, yeah, walking, like walking Phoenix said, uh, he was, I think it was when he was accepting an award for the Joker. Uh, he was like, I'm always like in contention with Christian Bale. And he looks at Christian Bale and he goes, Christian, please turn in a bad performance just once, please. (laughs) And in my opinion, Christian Bale has never done that. Every single role of his is so different and he's able to like none of his characters in any of his movies are comparable in any way you know he's not like he's not like a john cena or a jake johnson where he plays the same character in every movie yeah. he is and it's not like oh i'm watching christian bale in this movie it's like i'm watching ken miles in this movie i'm watching bruce wayne in this movie yeah it's and the, it's really the, awesome the physical dedication like gaining I was just <laughs> Gaining all that weight for Vice, losing all the weight yeah, for the machinist. Up, because I, he I, did I, he did the machinist right before Batman begins. So he dropped down to like 140 pounds or something and then gained it all back to like 215. And pure muscle for Batman. Yeah, not like he's like a tubby 215. He's just like pure bodybuilder. Yeah. 215 it's um, just insane what he what does i just i was going through the mdb trivia um christian bale lost 70 pounds to make this movie because he filmed it right after vice yeah and, and he and was matt damon said how did you do it and he goes i just didn't eat like that's crazy yeah and he talks about that for the machinist too yeah because and you like- when you watch the machinist none of that is cg that's what he actually yeah. looked like and you look at it, he talks about his diet for that for like four months straight and an, and an apple every day. And then he yeah. just smokes cigarettes. He just chain smokes cigarettes. And yeah, I was like, crazy. that's fucking insane. Oh, sorry. Sorry, versus... sorry, mom. Sorry. Yeah, uh, cussing th- a bit. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, mom. Apologies. I love you. you, you uh, look at versus Ferrari and it's not a role where you're like, oh, Ben, or sorry, Christian Bale is like, oh, I had to get a method act this and like, because you associate his drastic weight loss and weight gain with method acting. Uh huh. But it's just like he method acted so hard in Vice that it's like, oh, I got to cut back down. And it's crazy. Yeah. Um, he, he, he really is... is just a tremendous actor. He's so amazing. So you can agree with me when I say he's top five of all time. Oh, yeah, for sure. He, he's uh, unforgettable in everything he's in. He yeah. steals the show. Um, yeah, I love the scene when uh, it's it's kind of after the, the first act and mm-hmm. they're building the GT, but Ken Miles doesn't know about it. And they do the race at uh, Daytona. Mm-hmm. I think it's at Daytona and it's terrible he loses or something like that and i should know this we just watched it like yesterday or whatever and matt damon's like i want to show you something and he's like i'm beat i just want to have a tea and a crumpet or whatever (laughs) some british stuff yeah and he's like it'll be really quick you'll be back in time for whatever and they pull up and they pull the plastic off the ford gt and immediately ken pops up and he's like "Ooh," and you can see his mind start to tinker with how can I make this yeah. the best car on the planet, the fastest car, the most efficient car. Like, and you see, like the the spark ignites in that scene, and the rest of like the entire second act is Christian Bale's Ken Miles perfecting this car, and it literally does not stop until the final scene. Because mm-hmm. even after, I'm jumping ahead a bit, but like. After the end of the Le Mans race, he's like, oh, this could be better and this could be better. And Carol's like, well, what are we doing here? Let's get to the body shop. Like, it's it. Yeah, the, they, I, they sell these characters so well. Like Matt Damon is an actor where I think, oh, yeah, it's Matt Damon. I'm watching on screen like he's a really great character. He's he's acting as right now, but it's Matt Damon. And I find that Christian Bale kind of immerses himself so deeply into these roles where it's like I'm watching Ken Miles or I'm watching dick cheney or whatever batman or 
I don't know if you agree with that, but like I find yeah. that Matt, no, Matt Damon is so percent. Matt Damon is amazing, and I love him and everything he's in. But he's yeah. Matt Damon. He is Matt Damon. Exactly. Um, but yeah, and- that that scene is so awesome. Like they pull up to the airport, and it's so funny. Uh, he he like sees the other guy driving the car and he just like pulls the helmet off and immediately gets into it and starts racing it. He's like, How can I make this better? Like his dedication to the sport of racing is insane and Christian Bale Im- like just immaculately represented it. It's so yeah. freaking cool. I think the best scene for me well, obviously the the Le Monde sequence. Yeah, the whole uh, Le Mans race is insane. But the best scene for me is when Matt, when they're, when Lee or Leo BB, I think that was his name. Yeah. He, it's their first race at Daytona and they're like, Ken Miles can race at Le Mans if he wins at Daytona, if he gets first place. And they were, Uh, they told him the restrictions were to keep the car under 6,000 RPM. (laughs) And Matt Damon realizes with like it's like eight laps left or something. Not even that, that Christian Bale isn't gonna win, so he writes on a sign, walks out to the track, <laughs> holds up a sign, and then Christian Bale sees it, and you see this look in his eyes where he's just like, "Oh hell yeah!" Yeah, it says like, he's seven like seven thousand plus letter rip or something like that. And he's yeah, like, and he Aww. just like yeah, he draw. <laughs> He drops it into sixth gear and is just flying and bobbing and weaving. And God, it's so good. It's crazy how fast, like you watch this movie, you're like, oh, this is awesome. You sit there and you fathom how fast this fucking car is going. I'm sorry, Trey's mom. This car is insane how fast it's going. It's really insane. I genuinely don't believe it. Like, I'm, (laughs) I hit like 120 on a highway where the speed limit's 100, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm going so fast. That's kilometers, right? Yeah, and I'm going like, imagine going 350 kilometers an hour, and I'm like, how? How do you control this car? And it's really insane. It's awe-inspiring how how talented these drivers were and Mm -hmm. how much care this story has because it it is really funny and uh it's a dad movie but yet every character in this movie feels like it's done with care that they 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 emulate almost what what the person i don't know what they were like in real life i'd be curious to see like a documentary about this but like Mm -hmm. you feel like every single care in this movie is done with care and it's like yeah this this seems right and this seems like such a believable story you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so i appreciate it at the same time as i enjoy it so much and it's such a fun movie to watch um before we get in to what we've been watching before we finish up our review the ending of this movie yes let's talk about the ending the entire movie is a feel-good movie until the last 15 minutes. Yeah, uh, really um, quick, I want to talk about how they handle Ken losing the race. Mm-hmm. Because it's so frustrating. You watch it, and it's like, oh, why did they do that? But then it's like, oh, yeah, it's real life. This actually happened. And it's like kind of a weird feeling to think about. But at the mm-hmm. same time, I find that they handle the moment with such sincerity that you don't feel super bitter about it and they do not linger on it at all. Yeah. It comes and goes so quick. Like you see Christian Bale popping off in this race. And you're like, yeah, he won it. And even though he didn't win it, he won it. Like, and, yeah. and everyone knows it. And yeah, he set the lap record three times. Yeah. In a row. Like, like he set the lap record and then it's like, Oh, uh, Carol tells him, you need to slow down. And then he sets a lap record two times in a row. Like it's crazy. Um, yeah. But I find that they handle this, this moment with such uh sincerity that you never feel sad. It's like, ah, damn. But then you see these characters bounce back and they don't linger on it. They're like, let's go back to having fun. Cause this is a sport we love. And I think that's just awesome. Yeah. 
And then, yeah, we have the last 15 minutes, yeah. which and, me and Trey had both seen this movie before, and we yeah. watched it yesterday, and it was like... And then we get to, like, the final scene, and we're like, <laughs> so we turn it off here, yeah? Okay, cool. It, yeah, and it was so funny. Like, before we even started the movie, it's like, we're not watching the last 10 minutes, right? And I was like, yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We know what uh, happened. We don't need to see it again. Yeah. So, so uh, we can't, and we can't even be that mad about it because it's what happened. It's a true exactly. story. Exactly. And I find that that's a, the thing that you have to grapple with with biopics because, like, sometimes not all stories have a happy ending. Like, you exactly. watch Judas and the Black Messiah or you watch, like, Selma or, like, any, most biopics, like, do not have happy endings. Yeah. So I do think that it's a it's a frustrating moment but you can't dock the film for it at all. Yeah. Um um but yeah, it, obviously spoilers. In the end, Ken Miles they're testing out for the next year in Le Mans and he pushes it to 7000 RPMs, which if you don't know cars, if you've never driven a stick, that's so high. Like, you're in your top gear, you're pushing to 7,000. That's like you're pushing the car to places that it was not meant to go, and it would only hold together for so long. Yeah. And the car explodes, and he they don't get out there in time to get him out, and he suffocates, and he dies. Uh, but that, again, like you said, that's real life. That's just what happens sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and I was reading actually that uh, McL McLaren, who won the Le Mans in the movie, he died from a car crash at 36. Yeah, in a race, like it's it's the reality of this sport that it is not a safe sport. So many racers die from crashes. Yeah, and like safety has come a long way, so we don't see it as often as we used to. But like these crashes, like oh, it looks crazy on the screen, but like. And uh, I want to go back to the Ferrari biopic really quick. There is mm -hmm. a crash in this movie. Uh, spoilers, Trey. I, yeah. I can skip it if you want, but like... Oh, it's fine. There is a crash in the end of this movie, in the last act, and it kills like 15 civilians, decapitates the driver, murders children. Like, that's the reality of this sport, that yeah, these cars are so... They're so fast that... If a crash happens, it's going to be bad. And yeah, we really are lucky that it's not as bad as it used to be. But like, and there's that moment when uh, early in the film, when uh, Christian Bale crashes on the track because his brakes go out mm -hmm. and uh, he gets he's on the whole car is on fire and his son and his wife are there. And it's such a horrific moment. It's so sad. And he gets out fine. But like uh, Christian Bale's son is talking to, I don't remember who he's talking to directly. I think it's Phil. And he's like, Phil's trying to reassure him. He's like, oh, they have fireproof suits. And then his son brings up this one racer who died in a fireproof suit. Yeah. And it's like, well, as long as you can get out of the car, okay, you'll be fine. But sometimes that doesn't happen. So it's like, yeah, it's, it's a tough ending to grasp just because mm -hmm. it's so tragic and it's like this whole movie is such a feel good movie but like you couldn't leave it out that's not the yeah. story yeah so it's definitely the right decision to you know show the whole story but it's just like damn this sucks yeah um how uh so do you think this belongs on the IMDb oh, top 250 for sure yeah me this too. movie slaps it it is not only a great dad movie, it is a great drama, biopic, it's hilarious, it's expertly crafted, technical aspects are insane, the score is great, it has yeah. the great vibes of the 60s, like, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, then, that's our IMDb movies for today. Those are our reviews for today, our IMDb reviews. Um, if you're still listening with us, please like, comment, subscribe, whatever you want to do with our video, interact with us. Um, we're on our way. We are eight subscribers away from 50 subscribers. Oh, hell yeah. So if this is your first time or if you haven't subscribed, just do it right now. Yeah. Um, and also uh, try... like this video, comment down below. What's better, Ratatouille or Ford v. Ferrari? Ooh, Both five star yeah, films. Please let uh, me know. Let me know how right I am. Uh, Trey, uh, yes. two weeks from now, I'm very sorry, but. We're going to have to watch Bergman. 
Oh, what are we watching? We're watching the Seventh Room. Seal. We're watching Room, which is peak, and we're watching The Seventh Seal, which is Sweet. good but not great. Yeah, so... I'm so mad I fucking missed that on the other the other Bergmans because Seventh Seal is not my favorite Bergman, but I like yeah. it. So um, our next few movies um, are so this Friday we will be reviewing Inception and Interstellar. This is our Christopher Nolan time episode. Uh, excited for that. Um, and then next Tuesday will be Big Lebowski and Tokyo Story. We may have a guest for that one. Next Friday will be our final Christopher Nolan. Crazy. Our final Christopher Nolan, and it might be our we, yeah. Our final Christopher Nolan episode with yeah. Oppenheimer and Dunkirk. We um, might have to do Denis next, honestly, just for Dune. Maybe. I want to do the survey, but throw up directors that nobody ever does, like, deep dives on. Yeah, like, for for Denis, if we were to do Denis, I think we'd do his first three movies in one episode, because they're all pretty... Uh, they're not great, and they're pretty underwhelming. Uh, and then we do, like, Insomni, Enemy, Prisoners... Uh, insomnia is christopher nolan yeah oh sorry what did i say you said insomnia oh prisoner's enemy yeah we do like august 32nd and polytechnic and maelstrom and then enemy and so uh, enemy jesus and prisoners and then inson d i don't know i don't really know I don't what even that know the order but uh i i i i think it would be fun to do Leading up yeah, to we'll definitely cause... put them on there. Um, yeah, but, but yeah, then um, after that, we have Seven Seal and Room. Room uh, is amazing. I don't know if you've seen it, Trey. I have, and I'm yeah, excited great. to talk about it. And uh, I'm curious. <laughs> I don't know if you'll like Seven Seal. Yeah, we'll see. The, um, the plot of it is insane. It's about a knight who is kind of on his deathbed, and he uh, he's about to die, and he challenges death to a game of chess. And if he wins, he gets to stay alive. And if he dies, if he loses, he dies. That's crazy. It's cool. That's the it's, whole movie? Yeah. Well, okay, oh, yeah. so that's the plot. The whole movie is not the game of chess, but um, the movie is like him kind of like going through life, trying to avoid death and death popping up. It, it's cool. I have it at a four star. I do want to watch it again because it was like my second Bergman, second or third Bergman. Excuse me. Uh, so... I I do want to go back to it, but I'm I'm excited to hear your thoughts because you and Jagger did was it Persona you did? Yeah, that's crazy. That Persona is lower than Seven Seal. That's freaking crazy. Yeah. Um. But yeah, yeah, those are the episodes we're doing. Please join us for those. Uh, let's get into what we've been watching. Yeah. Uh, do you want to kick it off? Because you've got a lot. Let's see. We could start kind of um, with like one to one, and then you can kick it in when you get into your horror phase. Uh, let's do let's do two two. We'll switch off every two. Yeah. Well, like my first few was the Dark Knight trilogy. So I mean, we've talked about it. They're all amazing. So I'll yeah. just skip over those. Uh, what did you you had? Uh... Uh, my first one. Um. My first one uh, is Other People. Uh, it's oh, yeah. a small little indie film starring Jesse Plemons, Molly Shannon, Bradley Whitford, Maude Apatow. Uh, just a great cast. And I need to watch this. I was going into it because it says it's a comedy. And uh, so, uh, comedy drama. So I was like, cool, a comedy with a few dramatic moments. Um, yeah, screw you. If you're the one that labeled this a comedy, I was sobbing by the end of this. Uh, I would definitely recommend it. Jesse Plemons is a delight as always. Um, Molly Shannon is just outstanding. Um, yeah, it's just very sad, but it's very, 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 very good. Um, I quite enjoyed it. Four and a half stars for me. Um, nice. and then after that, I binged out the rest of of the Children of the Corn franchise. So I'm just going to review this as one movie. Uh, so let's see. First one, not terrible. First one was pretty good. I had a good time with it. Second one 
was very, very okay. What happened in this one again? I can't even remember. Yeah, second <laughs> one, second one, it, it's not memorable, obviously, but it's fine. The third one, Children of the Corn 3, Urban Harvest, banger. Really fun. Had okay. a lot of fun with that one. Some nice. crazy. The, the, the one consistent thing throughout these movies, especially the early ones, is they have wild practical effects that are just a blast. Ooh, we love that. Um, and so the fourth one, Children of the Corn, The Gathering, not good. This is where it really starts to go downhill. Uh, <laughs> Children of the Corn 5, Fields of Terror, a little bit better than oh. the one before. It has Eva Mendez, but still not good. Ooh. Star and a half. Now, these last four, that was number five. Children of the Corn 6. It's actually Children of the Corn 666. Six, six. Isaac's oh, return. Oh my god. My god. When <laughs> Dude, I tell I, you this movie was terrible. I cannot Woo! wait to watch these. Oh my god. They're all I'm on so Max, excited. by the way, if you want to check them out. I'm so excited. Uh, <laughs> then, number seven. Children of the Corn Revelation from 2001. Dude, you know really quick. Just if, so bad. If a horror movie has revelations after its title, it's going to be shit. Yeah. Uh, then 2009 Children of the Corn. This is essentially a remake of the original. Um, it's just so terrible. So, 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 so terrible. And then finally, thank all that is good and mighty. I made it to Children of the Corn Genesis released in 2011. Those last four, I can't even tell you what happens in any of these. I was so done. I was playing Assassin's Creed while I was watching these. And it, they're just so awful. They are so... What an awful... Yeah. It starts off strong. What an awful franchise. Those last five are just so terrible. They're so terrible. I'm watching them all. Um, yeah, Ooh, just sorry. awful. Um, so yeah, why don't you give us your first yeah, two after the Dark next two watches trilogy. were Interstellar and Inception. Uh, w and look W. Look forward to those on Friday. Yeah, because um, they're both five stars with a heart, and I adore both of them. Yeah, I um, Inception held up at the same level that I remembered it. Its peak, Interstellar even better than I remembered it. I saw. Okay, so Interstellar came out 2014. Uh, this was this came out on my 14th birthday, or right around mm -hmm. it. I yeah. this I saw this in 70 millimeter IMAX. Uh, we, you actually rented out an IMAX theater for this. Yeah, I saw it with my boys, and oh my god, it it blew me away. I have loved this movie ever since day one. I adore movies about space. Yeah, I <laughs> I this is such a funny story for me. Um, so I love looking at the moon. I have great views of the sky here in Calgary, and yeah. Uh, on Christmas Eve, my girlfriend and her parents were coming to pick me up, and it was like it was like 5 p.m. I got off work, and I was looking at the sky because it was kind of like that twilight where mm -hmm. you can see the moon, but it's still kind of blue out. And my girlfriend, I get in the car, and my girlfriend goes, "I legit thought you were an old lady just looking at the sky," and I was like, "What the, <laughs> what the fuck?" That's um, really funny. Yeah. So any movie about space is my is my shit i love space so interstellar it's peak i can't wait to talk about it more on friday um yeah after that i watched 2012 i okay i love disaster movies they're so much fun this is uh it's cheesy it it's it looks like a video game at times it's mm -hmm. it's ridiculous it's terrible woody harrelson is hysterical in this movie it's not great, but I love it. I wanted to give it a five star, but morally I couldn't, so I gave it a four star. I think it's a blast. I would recommend it. It's like two two hours forty five minutes. It's way too long, but for what? For twenty twelve, it's like two hours oh, forty five yeah. minutes. Yeah, um, yeah, that movie is unbelievably long. Yeah, I I don't even think the pacing's that bad. Um, but and it it's has great. the most stereotypical Russian guy. In yes, it. it totally oh does my God. um so i i really like it i've seen it a few times it's uh it's stupid and dumb and the the set pieces are just amazing they're so fun oh my god they're great yeah 
all of them. The Yellowstone, the San Andreas Fault, all of them. They're just peak. They're so mm-hmm. fun to watch. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then I watched, I'll leave it off here, and I'll ask her you watch, Girls Musical with my girlfriend. Was it a disappointment like we all predicted? Okay. So I was very conflicted about this because the original Mean Girls is one of my favorite movies ever. I've seen it like four or five times now. I think it's amazing, hysterical peak. I have not seen the musical, and this movie is not an adaptation of the movie. It's an adaptation of the musical. So I feel like because my girlfriend saw the musical, they actually came to Calgary and played it and i didn't get to go so we both love mean girls we both love all of it we like musicals she loved this movie she said it was a great adaptation of the musical i haven't seen the musical i thought it was fine i gave this a two stars it's probably more close to a two and a half um i was sleepy so i slept through the last little bit but like i mean you know what happens it's mean girls um yeah it's not bad. It's not a half star by any means. It's not below a two by any means. It's probably a two and a half. I'll probably raise it. Um, mm-hmm. It's tough because it's, it's it's again, it's an adaptation of the musical, not the movie. So if you haven't seen the musical, it's harder to grade. But yeah, my girlfriend loved this. And uh, she was like, I'm having such a great time. So I I recommend watching it. If you like Mean Girls, watch it. You won't you won't hate your life because the story is similar and the the jokes are still good the performances are fine and the songs are pretty decent they're not the best in yeah. I, that i've seen in a musical but they're not bad by any means so yeah i would say watch it um okay. if you like if you like mean girls if you don't like mean girls don't watch it but if you're a mean girls stan like i am watch it yeah cuz it, it, it's fun yeah it's not yeah. it's not as bad as people say it is for sure so yeah uh, cool. Um, yeah. so I finished the Children of the Corn franchise. Uh, that was four. If you, after I watched Genesis, if you went up on my letterbox page, my four most recent watches were all <laughs> half stars. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, so I decided I needed some peak in my life, something I knew was going to be five stars. So I gave Bo's Afraid a rewatch. Um, w. You've seen it, right? I don't see yes, it. Yes, I have, have seen it. Logged. It's a oh, five star. Do? Oh, I okay. do have it logged. It's my favorite Ari Aster movie, and it's my favorite movie in Ari Aster, Peel, and Eggers. It's ranking. just immaculate. And I feel like every time I watch that, I could pick up more and more and more and more. Um, there's just so much to process. Yeah. Uh, I... it's, it's unbelievably funny. Um, yeah, it's <laughs> I saw the paint clip on TikTok the other day, and I was laughing at how freaking weird that scene is. Yeah, and it's... the whole first like forty minutes in Skid Row. Oh my god, it's oh, so dude. good. Anytime it's... he's outside, I could just pause and look at everything that is yeah, going on. It's, uh, it's that crazy. That's my my second favorite part of the movie because my favorite part of the movie is the play. I think the play is immaculate. Oh, that's it's the best. Such part. a good scene. Um, yeah, but. The the scene in the be- the first act is amazing. It's so entertaining, and I know that everyone that's seen Bo's Afraid that I follow adores the first act. Nobody dislikes it. It's after that that they kind of have faults with it. Yeah, and if you fine. don't buy into the first act, then you're not going to like the yeah, rest of the movie. And I, <laughs> again, going back to the old mental health issues, I got mommy problems, so Bo's Afraid hits different for me. Yeah. I understand that it might not be a five star or a high rated movie for everyone this hit for me and i love it and uh, that's it's not a movie i can defend just because it it's a personal connection um Mm -hmm. it's weird i love the ending i know the ending is kind of weird and a lot of people think it's convoluted whatever i think the trial on the boat is amazing yeah i think the play scene is was one of my favorite scenes of 2023 i uh, Adore that scene. It is this monumental epic odyssey that you're taking on. And after yeah. that, it explodes into this absolute and weird, like, chaotic scene of, like, murders and just chaos. Uh, yeah, and this this movie is exactly why studios just need to give directors a bunch of money to just make whatever they want. Yeah, it's so funny because, like, Ari Aster popped off with Hereditary and he popped off with Midsummer. 
for a indie horror film director and yeah. they kind of gave him a blank check to make a movie he wanted and he did and it didn't do well and that's okay because it's a it's a crazy movie but it's the movie he wanted to make and that makes me happy that mm-hmm. he was yeah. able to get the the budget that he wanted also the biggest fault I have with this movie is that Ari Aster changed the title because the original title for this movie was Disappointment Boulevard and that is crazy. That is such a good name. Like, yeah. I I wish it was still that because that, that's amazing. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah that was I, I love it. And I followed that up with uh, Windfall, um, a Charlie yeah, McDowell I movie. This. I love Charlie McDowell. Uh, I have the one I love at four and a half stars. I have the Discovery at four and a half stars. And I have this at four and a half stars. Um <laughs> It's excellent. Charlie McDowell really does great things with Jason Siegel and Jesse Plemons. Um, yeah, I was going to say, so this is the Jesse Plemons movie that dropped during the pandemic, right? On yeah, Netflix? it's single location, so it's just, yeah. just Jason Siegel, Lily Collins, and Jesse Plemons. Right. Um, and it's excellent. It's, so I, I know really this, enjoyed my time with it. I'm curious, because I, I remember hearing about this movie, and I thought it would sound really cool. Yeah. And then views were really bad so i didn't watch it but hearing that you loved it i i want to go back to it now i did love it you should definitely check it out um, i will i just have i have massive love for charlie mcdowell all three of his movies we should do a charlie mcdowell episode <laughs> uh there There's... he just cooks man the one i love windfall and the discovery are all so good um there's this movie i want you to watch and it's also a single location horror thriller type thing. I gotta find yeah. the name of it. It's on Netflix. That's where I watched it. Villains. Okay, here I'll add it's it to the watch. It's crazy. Watch. It's really crazy. Yeah. Um. Well, yeah. Why don't you give us your next two? Yeah, my next two was uh, I watched uh, a couple of uh, Denise shorts. They're super trippy. If you have epilepsy, do not watch them. You will probably have a seizure. Um, yeah, they're cool. And then I watched Dune on the 24th and the 25th. Mm-hmm. It raised exponentially for me on rewatches. I had Dune around 4th or 5th on Denis, and it skyrocketed to 2nd or 3rd. I still kind of have it um, tied with Sicario almost, because Sicario before Dune 2 was my number one Denis. And this w. kind of... Yeah, I adore Sicario. It's my favorite like crime thriller ever. Um, yeah, I I still kind of wrestle with Dune and Sicario just because they're so different, and it's hard for me to compare them. Um, but yeah, Dune is just a a masterful science fiction epic. It is a slow burn, yet uh, it, it's delicate in its characters. It's very very deep, and you get such development in Paul and leto and jessica and uh the baron and even raban who is not you don't get developed with them but like every single character is handled with such care in this film that you yeah you love them or you sense such dread in them and like duke leto atreides is such a heartfelt character and his his story is so tragic like i can't get over how so how good dune is it's like you took Game of Thrones season one and you turned it into a futuristic sci-fi epic where these houses are battling for power over the universe. And it's mm-hmm. it, it's just masterful. It really is. Um, so I'll shoot it back over to you before I touch on Dune 2 again really quick after. Because that was yeah. my next watch. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so... I'll do this as one. I binged the rest of the Hell House franchise. Yeah. Um, me and Evan are both massive fans of the first one. Four Absolutely. and a half movie. Just peak found footage horror. I think probably the only one that I have above it is Blair Witch. W. <laughs> are w. you a Blair Witch? Sam? I am a Blair Witch. Oh, dude, dude, Blair oh Witch is peak. It's Blair so Witch good. is so I, good. Jagger okay. has Blair Witch at two and a half stars. That's crazy. The the scene at the end of the Blair Witch Project with the one guy of the greatest endings in of the all corner. Time. The guy yeah. standing in the corner. I don't think any scene has instilled as much fear and dread as that shot has. 
Ayatollah the Blair Witch it's, Project. Yeah, it's, it's so, so it's fucking so damn. good. Oh so my, my dad, do you know, like, first of all, Blair Witch, the greatest marketing campaign in the history oh my of God. cinema. Yeah. My, everybody thought it was a documentary. Yeah, people mailing the family of the actors, like, oh, are they dead? <laughs> like, that's crazy. That's yeah. crazy. And my dad saw it in the theater. And Ugh. what year did that come out? I think it's like 99 or 2000. Blair, Let me look. I'm going to figure this out. Uh, before I get back. 99. So my yeah. dad would have been uh, 15. He saw this in the theater. That's crazy. Uh, and he said he didn't go outside after dark for like a month. I don't blame um, him. But uh, yeah, binged out the rest of the Hell House trilogy, especially since I just got Shudder. Uh, w, w streaming service, by the way. Uh E uh and that the tr the prequel came out earlier last year and I was having a lot of FOMO because everybody was watching it and like oh this one's actually really good and I was like ah oh, fuck you guys ah sorry mom screw you guys uh so House of L ha Hell House LLC two the Abaddon Hotel not very good it's pretty, uh, mid, pretty very very pr mid. big step but big step down Hell House LLC three Lake of Fire pretty good. A lot more coherent it. than the second one. I probably have it rated higher than most people because I double featured it with the second one and it just it felt it felt like a huge step up. Um, and then uh, well obviously I watched Jurassic Park but I already talked about that. Uh, five stars easily. Uh, and then I watched uh, Hell House LLC Origins. Uh, the Carmichael Manor. Banger. Very good. Very, very good. Did you give uh, that a four or was a it a three, three and a half? half. Two? Okay. Yeah. It it didn't um it didn't like hit the level of scariness that the first one hits. Right. But it still has some really creepy, intense moments that I really enjoyed. Yeah. Um I need to finish it. Yeah. Uh so yeah, binge the rest of those. Yeah. Um why don't you give us your next two? Yeah. How many uh, do you have left? Because I have one two four five i have five left one of them is four versus furry uh, okay i have four so, i have four left so okay why don't you so bust me, out your last few and then i'll bust out mine yeah i'm gonna talk about dune 2 really quick a little bit more not a lot don't worry no spoilers um yeah i've been kind of grappling with <clears throat> honestly how to rank this in my sci-fi rankings because genuinely i think it might be the best modern contemporary science fiction film of all time and yeah um it's kind of crazy to compare it to 2001 because that's my favorite science fiction film of all time it's the greatest it's the it, greatest it movie really, ever made it, it really is a perf perfection it movie like it's it's just perfect but dune part two is just such a monumental achievement in cinema it is it's just so delicately crafted yet so epic and every character is given its justice the score is insane arguably han zimmer's best score at least top three the action looks incredible the sound design is insane like go watch this movie in imax don't watch this movie in a normal theater watch it in imax because the sound yeah. design is insane i cannot get over how good it is um I I'm kind of astounded. Like and and the the third act, like the action. I, I actually won't even say that. The action in this movie is on another level compared to the first movie. Like people think the first movie is boring. Whatever, that's fine. This movie is not boring. It's very action packed. Go watch it, please. If you've seen it, drop a comment about it because I'm curious to see your thoughts. All of yeah. my mutuals have this at a five star except for one. Um, I can imagine that Freaking this ace. will yeah ace is i don't even want to talk about it <laughs> this i think this i think this movie will go down in history as one of the greatest science fiction movies of all time and cementing denis as one of the greatest directors ever like before dune 2 i was kind of like yeah christopher nolan's better at this point i don't know I genuinely find myself comparing Dune and Oppenheimer 
and it's really hard to compare them because they're so different. Yeah. But just as like epics, well, you don't e- you don't even have to like they're two no. amazing movies. That yeah, exactly. And I fu- like both of their feature debuts came out in the same year, right? So they're kind of growing, and every movie they grow a bit more, right? And yeah. it's super amazing to see. And it's like, like you said, I won't even compare them. It's it's like you said, they're growing together. They're boys. Like they love each other, and. That's awesome. Yeah. Like you see the the press interviews where they're hanging out and they're introducing each other's movies, and that's just sick to see. You have two directors who have been on insane runs together. Like their runs have genuinely been insane. Denis has been on a cracked run. Like whether you like Tenor or not, no one's also been on a cracked run. But like, yeah, Dune Two is just a monumental film, and I cannot wait to see Dune Messiah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, and I can't. It was funny because I got out of Dune with my girlfriend, and I was like, I would go see it tomorrow if I could. I was like, fuck, it's not out yet. I can't go watch it tomorrow. Um, and, that's, like and then I think, it, that's like me when Oppenheimer came out. The instant yeah. I got out of Oppenheimer, I bought tickets to see it again. Yeah, I have tickets to go see Dune again t- on Friday, and I'm, I think I'm going to go. I'm not sure. I have to check my schedule but i was like i'm just gonna buy them regardless like even if i can't go whatever yeah um but yeah like <laughs> i i cannot wait to see number one the box office because since dune one was released during the pandemic and on max mm-hmm. and crave the box office for that movie is pretty skewed and it's not really fair to judge it i want to see dune 2 hit a billion and i honestly think it could <laughs> honestly i'm not yeah. even joking um yeah so i'm really excited for that and i'm super excited to see what oscars it can pull in because number one dune one was crazy with the oscars and like yeah. one of the things that's really interesting about this is that it's coming out very early in the year and most oscar movies come out late in the year yeah, I cannot fathom the Oscar race if Dune came out last year between that and Oppenheimer. Oh my Insane. god, dude! Uh, not as much on the acting level. I think that Timmy is amazing, and I, I kind of want to see an Oscar nomination for him. Not gonna lie, I would love to see Austin Butler pull in a nomination for Fade Rather. Like he is so fucking good in this movie. Yeah, um, that's what I've heard. Yeah, he is great. I. I, I'm just I'm so excited for the for like film in general seeing this because it's so good. I know I was I said I was going to keep it quick, and I hope that I haven't said anything spoilery. Yeah, ha- I haven't. A eh? like it's it's no, just, you haven't. Yeah, it, it's just amazing. Go watch it. Go watch Dune. Support cinemas. Enjoy some peak. It. I don't know if you saw it today, but Ferdinand saw Dune in cinemas. He was double featuring both Dunes. And he gave Dune a four point five. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, go Dune go or watch Dune, Dune two. Dune one. He raised it from a one to a four point five. He had it at a one star. Yeah, he hates Dune. Well, oh, he hated man. Dune, and then he saw it that Peter's means and... it's really great. If Ferdinand. Gives so it he's watching I Dune raised... two right now, as far as I know, and I'm super curious to see. Did if... we did we do a uh, uh, a lottery? No, oh, we should have. Damn. That'd be sick. But yeah, so go see Dune 2 on Friday. Support Denis. Support cinemas. This is a theater movie at its finest. Yeah. yeah. It's it's peak. I really hope I didn't say too much about it. I tried to veer away from any story moments. It's peak. Yeah. It's fucking peak. That's all I can say. Go watch it. It deserves to be seen on the biggest screen you can find with the biggest speakers. Yeah. Okay, I'm done yapping. Uh, you hopefully, me us... and Tra- hopefully me and Trey will have a Dune 2 episode coming soon. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to give us your last few? Yeah, my last few. So yesterday uh, I watched 4 vs. 4 with Trey, and then I watched Insan D for the first time. I had tried watching this movie uh, a while ago, but honest, I watched it on Crave, and it didn't have English subtitles, so I had to turn it off. Mm-hmm. And yesterday I watched it, and this movie blew me away. Yeah. Do you hear that ticking? Do I? God, it's my freaking headphones. Sorry, oh. everybody. They're going all Oppenheimer on me. 
Okay, it's it's good now. Um, yeah, yeah in, okay. in Sondi, I wanted to kind of take away some more Denis films. This film blew me away. Number one, it has Radiohead multiple. There's like three Radiohead needle drops and like that's you know, a massive me, I, W. I, I I love Radiohead. Um, this is a very delicate family drama set on the backdrop of a horrific war, and it's a heartbreaking movie yet it's kind of it's very touching about you know reclamation of family it's it's a hard movie to talk about without spoilers i don't know if you you haven't seen it eh no not yet um so okay so i'll keep this spoiler free um yeah it's it's very heartbreaking and it's very interesting it it uh it bounces around in time a lot as Denny likes to do back mm-hmm. and forth between the mother and the kids because the, the plot is about a mother who passes away and her kids get the wills and it's like you need to go find your brother who they didn't even know existed so they journey back to her homeland um, it's yeah. really interesting and yeah it's amazing it's it's very very disturbing but it has a conclusion that is very frustrating yet satisfying yeah, and it's it's hard to buy into sometimes just because of the plot twist, which I won't say. Like I think you should watch it. We could talk about it if we do it in the episode. Yeah. It's really really great. I wish I watched it sooner. I gave it five stars. It's peak. And then after that, I was severely depressed, so I rewatched Before Sunset, Tell my favorite you. movie ending of all time. My second favorite movie of all time. It's probably coming up on my favorite movie ever. Honestly, like yeah, it 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 just is. It's such a comfort movie for me. The The ending is my favorite movie ending of all time. It's such an organic love story. Mm-hmm. Given that most of the dialogue is written by the two actors, it's so, so organic, which makes it feel just like you're watching two people fall in love and reconnect. Like, my favorite part of Before Sunset is the reconnection. Like, they they meet up after nine years, and it's so weird at first, and it, and it just immediately slips back in like not a second has passed since the first movie it's my favorite on-screen relationship ever it's my favorite ending to a movie ever i adore this movie with all of my heart and yeah five stars with a heart it's my second favorite movie ever behind synecdoche new york it could easily go to my favorite movie ever yeah it's peak and then i watch ratatouille so yeah we talked about that so why don't you finish it off yeah let me pull up my letterbox again uh, yeah, watched a uh, Shutter original called The Marshes, a little Aussie horror. Uh, t- terrible. So bad. Don't watch it. Um, I watched uh, a movie from 2017 called Win It All uh, with Jake Johnson and Joe Latrugio and Keegan-Michael Key, who, let me let me just say for a second, Joe Latruglio, famous for his role on Brooklyn Nine-Nine as Charles Boyle. Mm. He's an American treasure. Love him so much. Um, yeah, this was just a nice little feel good, uh, drama, um, really enjoyable. It's about a gambling addict. Um, very good. Uh, I watched the humans. All I'm going to say about this, because I feel like I could talk about this forever. Uh, yeah. Double feature this with Shiva baby. And yeah. then watch, just the, watch this movie. Um, if you want, I, I want to add on a little bit. Um, yeah, because this is kind of a specific drama because it's a family drama, right? But it's yeah, this movie is filmed like a play. It and it it, it the, the set is like a play. So if that's something you like, a single location that really uh, it plays on the set a lot, and it's got some funny moments and horrific moments. I think that Amy Schumer is surprisingly good in this. Yeah, that was the really weird part. It's I, crazy. I hate Amy Schumer. Same. She's like genuinely one of my least favorite people. I just don't like comedian. Like, look, I get it. See, it's like comedians rip each other off for like ideas of jokes and stuff like that. But she has literally like stolen word for word jokes from yeah. other comedians, which I just that just really rubs me the long wrong way. And I don't like that. But she was amazing in this. She was very, very yeah. Good. She's really good. I think this movie is really underrated. I uh, I told Ferdinand to watch this, and he he liked it, but didn't love it. I think he gave it a four or a three and a half, which is fine. Um, it's a unique film, really. Like the the setting is so interesting. Like it genuinely 
it's shot like a play and it zooms out and it's yeah. like the set is and cut in half and it's got my uh celebrity crush beanie feldstein oh yeah and richard jenkins is great in this richard too Jen- he's richard really jenkins really great is great and everything yeah uh the, the humans is awesome i saw this at the tiff film festival online i rented it because unfortunately i don't live in ontario anymore but yeah yeah go watch the humans i don't think it's super long and it's a really unique no, film it's if like you're in the mood, minutes yeah if you're in the mood for a, a family drama that's uh very delicate go watch it i, I think you'd Excellent. like it yeah um and then i finished it off with a western horror that i made it about 10 minutes into before turning it off um <laughs> it's movies like this that make me question my love for cinema uh it's called the pale door shutter exclusive definitely do not watch it it is awful yeah it is I, so <laughs> me and Trey were talking before this and i was like why are you watching all these shitty horror movies and he's like oh i'm shuffling my shutter watch list and i was like dude no it's there's just, it's, i'm shuffling your watch list and it's on shutter yeah like there's so many bangers on shutter i really want you to watch sissy a very dark comedy and then yeah. I want you to watch Dead. I want to watch Deadstream with you, but I want you to watch Sissy because it's it's awesome. But yeah, yeah, like Shutter really does have, and I mean it has. You said you watched some of an Argento movie and didn't like it, right? No, I just said I just never finished it. Right. Okay. I don't know why. Well, but... I'm curious to to see your take on some of his movies because most of them are on Shutter. So if you keep going, let me know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that that rounds out my watch list. Yeah, me too. That was a long episode, but yeah. we're glad you guys were here for it today. Please remember to like and subscribe. Uh, rate our podcast if you're listening on Spotify. Give us a follow. Yeah. Uh, on my socials, I'm Trey the Film Noob everywhere. Evan is Evan0567. Yeah, um, and then also on, on Friday, on Friday, Alan, make sure you tune in for Inception Glazing from me. I know Trey's going to back you up, but. I'm gonna glaze. Wait, More have like you rewatched it yet? Inception. Did you rewatch it yet? Not yet. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Tune in Friday. Tune- Friday is gonna be super fun. Inception and Interstellar, two amazing sci-fi films. Yeah. It's gonna be a blast. And then next uh, next Tuesday we got Tokyo Story and The Big Lebowski, and you can expect me to probably complain about The Big Lebowski. Maybe I'll like it now. It's, I don't it's, know. Uh, it's not for everybody. I was young when I saw it. I was like 14, so my sense of humor's changed. Uh, yeah. Heck yeah. Um, yeah, let's do it. We're the average film enjoyers. That is... Sorry, I got distracted there for a second. Uh, yeah. That's it. So we'll see you soon. See you on Friday. God, that was a terrible ending. <laughs>